Welcome to our presentation on Industries and Recyclable Materials by Midwest Fiber Recycling. In the following presentation, we will review types of businesses and their recyclable waste streams. We will also discuss various requirements and nuances of recycling specialized materials. When recycling facilities can look at the types of material they recycle, they generally can be categorized into these four categories of businesses. We generally see the same types of materials coming from industrial manufacturing and distribution centers, and therefore they can be placed in one category. However, materials from the remaining three categories are fairly specific to each. Here are several examples of the various kinds of recyclable material that you'll find in typical plants and warehouses in this category. Notice that a majority of these materials are things you've probably seen in residential settings. Most everyone has received packages at home that have PET or PP plastic banding and bubble and stretch wrap. In addition, you've probably seen and used several plastic buckets, and every electronic device you have is encased in an ABS plastic. We know that residentially, we cannot recycle these items. However, in large quantities, almost anything is recyclable. But there is a catch. You may have enough LDPE stretch film to theoretically recycle it, but it needs to be packaged in a specific way in order to make it financially feasible to transport it to recycling facilities and mills. This is generally the case for most specialized material, especially plastics. LDPE film, for example, has three grades, A, B, and C. The highest quality grade is A, meaning it's mostly clear film, free of stickers and other colored film. The more colored film, stickers, and other contaminants you have, the lower the grade. And the lower the grade, the lower the rebate. Likewise, plastic banding can be made of PP, which is polypropylene, or PET, polyethylene terephthalate. Each of these types of plastic and the various colors they come in should be separated to obtain the highest rebate possible. And the same concept applies to color sorting ABS plastics. Here are several more examples of recyclable material from this category. The picture on the top left is a picture of plastic preforms. And if you're not familiar with the preform, it's what plastic bottle manufacturers start out with to blow mold a plastic bottle, generally PET. If you look closely, on the bottoms of those preforms, you will see a neck of the bottle where the cap screws on. This part is attached to a machine that adds heat and air to expand the preform into the full bottle shape. All of the plastic in the entire bottle is contained in this one small tube. These are highly recyclable and valuable for two reasons. One is that PET is one of the more valuable plastic commodities. Another is that the plastic molecules are dense in this form and therefore you can get a lot more material in a shipment than if they were already molded. Some of the reasons that manufacturers recycle these pre-consumer plastics is due to defect, both physical and molecular, or the bottle design has changed and will no longer fit customer specifications. Another material pictured here is densified polystyrene, trademark name is styrofoam. Since expanded polystyrene is very lightweight and infused with a lot of air, this makes it very difficult to package and transport efficiently. Densifying machines help to compact the polystyrene to make a more dense block, which can then be packaged and transported. And we save the best for last in this category. These glass and mineral filled engineered plastics are much more difficult to find markets for and to package and ship efficiently. However, markets do exist and creative full service recyclers are capable of marketing these materials.
I bet you didn't realize that the printed word can come to you on 11 different grades of paper. These 11 grades of paper range from mixed paper to blank white news. Each of these grades of paper has a different commodity value which changes monthly. This is why it is important to separate your grades of paper properly. To get the best value out of any grade of paper, bailing is often the best option. Books have long been a mysterious item to recycle, both in the home and in business. Books are recycled on a case-by-case -case basis in any given residential recycle program and regionally with professional recyclers. A lot of this has to do with the binding, the amount of glue, and the machinery the recyclers have to handle those parts of the book. The agricultural waste stream is wide and varied. The far bottom left picture is of super sacks. These are a nylon material which are roughly 40 by 40 by 48 inches tall. Typically, they hold food grade products like sugar, flour, and grain. The top left pictures are agricultural seed packs and bags which have very few markets to sell to in the U.S. Again, a knowledgeable professional recycler should be able to handle these hard to recycle materials. In the set of pictures on the right, the top left picture is of a poly-lined craft bag. These are typically two layers of brown paper with a plastic liner sandwiched in the middle. This is to make the bag moisture resistant. Therein lies the issue with recycling this bag due to the plastic liner. Contrary to popular belief, there are one or two markets for this material, but you have to have the right recycler who has the contacts to do so. This all goes back to the primary principle we talked about in an earlier slide. If you have enough of something, someone will want it. Offices and schools are very similar in their waste streams to residential waste streams. The biggest difference is quantity generated. Most recyclable materials in the home are also going to be recyclable in an office or school setting. Sometimes schools will have commercial compost facilities where they can send their food scraps, whereas residentially, often the only option for food scraps is composting yourself. Though the material that offices and schools generate is similar in nature to residential material, the quantity will be much greater and therefore should be handled by a professional recycler. This can help schools collect, organize, and in some cases sell their recyclable materials. I know we've just gone over a lot of information, so here are some key takeaway concepts. One, quantity often determines recyclability. If you have enough of a certain material, someone is going to want it. Two, quality often determines rebate. The higher the quality, the higher the rebate. Three, sorting and packaging help increase efficiency, viability, and rebate. Four, professional recyclers can help you evaluate, advise, and get the best rebate for your material. And five, knowing your material is paramount. For example, if you have translucent and opaque PET banding, you need to know the difference between the two because they're going to have a different commodity value. For more information on plastic quality grading, just see our additional packet. And I hope you found this information helpful and thank you for viewing this presentation.